Hey, what's up? Ken from Paul Beach Dino here. It's Monday morning and I just woke up in the parking lot of the shop. Yeah, sometimes this job isn't all it's cracked up to be. Anyway, we had an awesome weekend with Shelby American at Ford of Kendall Friday at their car show and then Sunday at Cars and Coffee. Uh, we just finished up Kelly Aiken CX-1300R featuring a Whipple supercharger. We brought that along with us, but it has not been dynoed yet. We just put a bass tune on it uh, and uh, you know he did drive it home from Cars and Coffee. Why don't you check out some of that footage right now and then we'll go check his car out and see what's up for this video. Take a quick look at this thing. It came out awesome. Jeremy was uh, real detailed on all the hoses and um, how we plumbed the fuel system over here. We're gonna go over this in some more detail later. Uh, this is all uh, our super high-end fuel system with an injector dynamics brushless pump controller, their filter, turbo smart regulator. Um, these lines are just temporary for now. We're gonna be redoing all of those with our speed flow crimped fittings. We're just waiting on our machine for that. Anyway, now we've got the 3875 pulley. We're gonna see what kind of power we can make with that. Maybe try a 375 on 93 if needed and then switch over to E85. All right, Kelly's here, and uh, those guys are loading the car on the dyno. We're gonna go ahead and check it out. Kelly's already seen the car, but we're gonna hear from him what he thinks about the setup. One thing I wanna point out before Kelly says anything is Kelly always has to make everything more difficult. Uh, and normally you lower the engine for the Whipple with uh, special motor mounts that Whipple provides. And uh, the biggest reason for that is clearance for the strut tower brace, which is also why the lid looks like this. But Kelly didn't want to run the strut tower brace, and he decided he didn't want to lower the engine either. And we weren't sure that we were going to be able to pull that off, but we, we were. Uh, and uh, Jeremy was able to trim that up really nicely. Obviously, the clearances are super tight. We don't know what's going to happen at Watt on the street. Uh, hopefully, uh, nothing hits, but for right now, we're good. Tell us a little bit more about uh, you know what you think of this setup. It felt great. Everybody on the line has been saying, I don't know about putting the whip on my car now because it can't get the drive right. I don't know yeah. all their details, but I've been seeing that lately. Yeah. Yesterday, on the way home from the car show, um, I talked to Rob, and he said that that's the, just the base tune. Yeah. They just put the tune in it to drive it to the ship, you know, put it in the trailer, yeah. not even to drive it. Yeah. And I drove it home yesterday, and it drove so good. Mm -hmm. The only thing was the idle was a little bit high, but yeah. I mean, that's always, on these big builds, that's yeah. always the case. It's never low, it's high. Yeah. Yep. You know? And that's so. something we're chasing a little bit with throttle right. body stuff, but overall, it's real good. Now, for those of you guys that don't know, uh, I tuned the very first Whipple GT500 at Whipple. Um, that car actually wound up getting shipped here, but it was at Whipple when I remote tuned it, and it's over there, and we're taking it to the track soon. My car has the Whipple. Kelly car, Kelly's car now has the Whipple. Uh, Ryan, um, right. Ryan Moran, or well, Ryan Wright. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, Ryan Wright uh, is a remote customer. Uh, Ryan Moran, uh, we have one that just finished up, which is the same color of my car. So the point is, is we're all in on the Whipple stuff. We're still all in on the stock uh, port of blower stuff. We're all in on GT500, that's the point. Uh, we buy all this stuff, we put it on our own cars. Kelly's a very good friend of mine. Uh, he decided to have us work on the car, which gives us another great opportunity to touch everything, tune it, fine tune it. And in this case, what we're doing right now is Rob's loading a uh, new 93 tune on it. Uh, we've got the base pulley. Now, this thing has a very custom fuel system that we'll talk about in a little bit and can handle just about any power this motor can do. But for now, we're starting with the very largest pulley, see what boost we make, 93 octane. So let's see what happens. Why don't you guys put in the comments and tell us what you think it's gonna make on 93 octane.
Flashback. Well, let's put that up. Look at that. Holy cow. What a comparison. That's how you dropped it off. Dude. On E85, of course. Yeah, that's on E85. Like, kind of like a max effort stop pulling you. Right, right. One thing I mentioned earlier is Kelly's car has a, basically a prototype beta system uh, that we put together uh, by Injector Dynamics. It's their fuel pump controller. It's been out for a few years in beta. It still is. Uh, I use it on my own red car and Kelly wanted to put it on his car. Now, it's fully adjustable and the two things that we're going to adjust here is the maximum output of the system, uh, which we probably have turned all the way up. I'm actually going to back that down a little bit and then we have uh, map and uh, this is the map and bar as to when it will go full out. So I have that turned all the way down so it'll be at full, full power pretty much as soon as it hits two bar, which is 14 pounds of boost roughly. And then the max, it doesn't need to go full max in the power rat, so I'm gonna turn that down a little bit. All right, here we go. This is uh, on the 3875 one more time with a couple tune changes. <laughs> and 615. Now keep in mind, uh, I think 900 is totally uh, possible on 93 octane. The humidity is through the roof. And on my own personal car, my wife's car, Brandy, on our 900 package for the uh, stock blower, we're seeing upwards of 21 pounds. Now here's another thing to look at. We're seeing 18 and a half pounds, but are we really? That's right here. 18.45. It's already uh, dropped off up there. So now uh, peak power, if you look over here, was at 8,000 roughly. So at 8,000 RPM, right there, we're actually seeing 17.9. It didn't even hit 18. So if you compare that to 21 pounds on the stock floor, yeah. I mean, I think that's pretty good. Yeah. So, uh, and the humidity, I wouldn't be surprised if this thing picked up 20 horsepower uh, with drier air at least. Um, so. What we're doing is, Jeremy's gonna swap the fuel over to E85, and then we're gonna get serious with that. Awesome. Real Dude. serious. This is our new guy, Adam. He's got this uh, 
with the package done. I thought this was a CX-1300R, uh, but it's not doing the carbon, but it's pretty much the same thing without carbon. Uh, how was it putting this thing together? You know, for those guys that are gonna do the install at home, what do you think? Um, the Whipple install isn't too bad. Um, the, the fuel system, to me, was a lot more difficult and time consuming than the Whipple itself. And the headers too, right? And the headers. That's probably the worst part. Yeah, but besides that, it's pretty straightforward. Very cool. Whipple makes a really awesome kit. Like I said, this one's got our fuel system. Well, actually, uh, let's see. That's a four fuel system. The 3.8 liter Whipple, uh, Cooks long tubes, full exhaust. Pretty much, I guess we would call this the X1300 package. Those aren't getting serialized. Only the CX cars are, uh, but this is pretty much the same thing power-wise. This will be heading to the dyno sometime next week, probably. All right, they got the fuel swaps. Uh, right now we're keeping the what? 375 points on, so we're basically just seeing the gains from P85, right? That's so all it is. All right, so what's it gonna make? Pay what? Sorry. 928. Okay, but what did it make? Eight? Oh, uh, 863. 863? 868, 863? Yes. So 928, Nine, just for the 85. Yeah. Uh, 951. All right, I'm gonna go with 934. Let's see your guess in the comments. Rob's gonna get it warmed up. While he's getting it warmed up, I wanna see what you guys think it's gonna make. <laughs> guessing but really after we analyze the numbers it's starting to make sense so let's look at it we got 1037 and 750 and this is Kelly's car but one thing to remember is Kelly has stock manifolds and this is a stock blower I'm thinking in terms of my car which was 1187 and 802 on the same exact pulley like physically it's the same pulley right. I only have 1325. In fact, this is three different cars, all with the same exact pulley on it. Now, this is not scientific whatsoever. Uh, we're just kind of inferring some results here. And some of these cars may not, have different air and different timing curves slightly, different, uh, you know, uh, coolant temps, or not coolant temps, but uh, air temps that the timing curve might have been slightly different. But let's ignore all that. Right here, you're talking um, about a little bit less than 60 horsepower which I heard 80 horsepower on the port, so that's not too far off. 
And then, but the headers is obviously the bigger game, possibly. 10.33 to 11.15. Uh, so what is that? 80 to 90. Yeah. And that almost seems impossible that it's headers. What do you guys think? I would, I would think 50 to 60. Yeah. Didn't I mean, you do some header testing? I did, but... It was uh, like 50 or something? I, I, I'd have to go watch my YouTube videos know, to know. <laughs> Actually, there's more. I, we do so many cars here, I forgot about Ryan Moran's car, who is another Whipple car we did, but was set up exactly like my car, which had the headers and the race port. Uh, Kelly's car here is the green car, non-port, no headers. Ryan's tune was done after mine, so things were cleaned up a little bit better, so he made a little bit more power, and we ran it out, but you can see Ryan's and mine were almost identical, and Kelly is way down here. So, no, I mean, I, you know. <laughs> a few moments later. All right, Kelly decided to go with the 3-0 fully to try to make up for the port and the headers. Think, Kelly, you happy with the car? Oh, I'm super happy. Yeah. You see the power curve? Yeah, so the street what, car, man. So, based off of where it came in and where yeah. it ends up, we're at 1080, 820 to 1080. Yeah, so 260 at the wheel. 260 at the wheel. So, what are you hoping for first time out? Let's say not fully dialed in. Honestly, like, uh, I'll be pretty specific. I'd love to go like 9192 at like 100 low fit 150s yep. just to kind of get. Yep. I think the car has an eight in it all day, but you know, it's very rare, especially with the GT500, to go to the track and hit a home run. I thought this was gonna be the end of the video, but I'm gonna go over all these graphs in a little bit more detail, compare my car, Ryan Moran's car, Kelly's car, uh, race port and headers, and go over a little bit more detail on what our recommendations are moving forward based on what we learned. All right. You guys have seen me do dyno videos before, and this is a great time for it because we've dynoed enough of these Whipple cars that we can really start telling you what certain modifications are worth. When Kelly first brought us his car, he decided he didn't want to do the headers, and he had the blower already, and it was imported, and uh, we just wanted to see what it would do, and we did. Honestly, overall, I was a little bit disappointed, but for the modifications, this is good power. Now, what we can do is compare this to the other Whipples that we've done to see what the port is worth and what the headers are worth. Now, of course, it's not the same vehicle. I'm gonna show you three other vehicles uh, and we have more coming. We can even do a more, uh, a deeper comparison when the other ones get dynoed. But this is gonna be four cars totaled. This one is no headers and a non-ported blower. This is the Whipple that you've seen in the shop, the black one, this one, has headers, but a, not a ported blower. So as you can see, just the headers. Now, keep in mind, this is all on the same exact pulley. It's pretty much the same tune, uh, 3.25 uh, 3 pulley with a stock lower, all eight rib, almost identical cars. So you're talking 81 horsepower in headers. That is absolutely insane. So now you have to say, well, is that real? I do not have another vehicle with headers and no port, but we have two more vehicles that have the same setup and add the port job. The first one is my vehicle, which is now uh, getting a new engine in it. 
So this really demonstrates the value of the port when you lay it over the blue line. Right here at the very high end, this thing just keeps pulling and pulling and pulling. And we did lose a little bit down low, the green line here versus the blue line. But we don't really care about that. In fact, as we lower the torque, uh, well, in fact, you can see right here, uh, 1118 peak, mine is 1187 peak, but the torque is almost identical. And that's a good thing in this case, or any really high horsepower setup. You know, torque does help get the car moving out of the hole, but it breaks parts and we don't want to hurt our transmission. So now we can say we have three cars here. They have three different mods, no headers, uh, no port, just headers, headers and port. And now we have one more vehicle to add on top of that. This one actually made even more power, but it was mostly because it was ran on a cooler pass and uh, we revved it up a little bit higher. You can see actually the lines meet up right here. My car had uh, a little bit of roughness through here, uh, which this is Ryan Moran's car. Ryan's car had the same style graph, but then every time we do another car, we clean that up. So, but you can tell that the orange and green were on the same trajectory. That's tuning differences. So now we'll count Ryan's as the real deal there, since that's the most recent cleaned up tune and we won't compare peak power, we'll just compare it right here at 8,000 RPM because they didn't all go to the same RPM. You're talking 1032, 1110, and 1184. So just the port job in this case was worth uh, 74 horsepower. Total, we're talking 152 horsepower at 8,000 RPM. And as you can see, the graphs are continuing to converge. You can pretty much surmise that this is not going to make any more peak power. So say at 8,500, best case scenario, it's making 1118. And now this one is making 1212. So 1118, if this held out and 1212, most likely this is actually going to go over. So you're talking 150 here, 200 horsepower at 8,500 RPM. This is just unbelievable and remember these cars i'm showing you with headers have the green catalytic converters from cooks so they're fully uh carb compliant uh this is not a comparison of off-road versus non-off-road running that kind of power with cats is not recommended all the time if you're going to run catalytic converters which we recommend if you're on the street uh it's best to just go ahead and run this at the track and then change the pulley for driving around town anyway i hope you enjoyed the video please share it with your friends like it and I'll see you on the next one.